Does it still amaze you how the fans turn out to see you? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it, it does. It always, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a gratifying sort of thing to have people that come down. We've been doing this. Oh, I've been doing this, buddy. I've been here for seven, seven years. Seven years. And we come down every year and they show up and we sign autographs, the other decks, and fat backs, and shake hands. Just have a good time. It's a, it's a very nice atmosphere. It's a, it's a fun thing to do. You're playing over with Ryan tonight with Marty Stewart, Gretchen Wilson, and if you tell us a little bit about that event. Well, you know, it's, it's a thing that Marty does every year. <laughs> and this is the first year that we've done it. We, uh, we used to have a town a lot of times when you know, it's gone or whatever. We have to have Jesse Eskins to do it this year. And uh, so we can see how it works. Well, and speaking of Gretchen Wilson, you gave her her high school diploma. How'd that come about? She, she requested it. Uh, she, Gretchen lives not too far from me in, in the school she, she attended. They got her GED is in the same county I had in. And she sent a request uh, for me to hand her her diploma. And then I was asked to make her kind of a little commencement address. So. Does that make you like Dr. Daniels or something? I am Dr. Daniels. I have a, I'm a doctor, I am a doctor of letters. I have a honorary doctor's degree from the University of North Carolina. <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> that 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee. Exactly. Some places, some places a dollar. Um, I gotta ask you, Grand Old Opry member Charlie Daniels, has that sunk in yet for you? Yeah, I, it has. It, it, uh, I don't think the gravity of it sunk in yet because it's been a lifelong dream of mine. And I'm 71 years old. And I, got the point, I didn't know what's going to happen. Now, they've always been good to us. We've always played the opera that we went to. When we were in town, you know, when we were to play around the locker, it was a phone call or what. But not to be, to, to be an official part of the opera is a totally different thing. You know, so it's one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Absolutely. I want to ask you kind of a personal question here. More interacts going on now. We have an election coming up. Two uh -huh. very stark different plans on how to handle this. Do you have any advice on how to vote in the interest of the military? Not necessarily a long wait. Well, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't really want to get into I, I have a website too, and if you want to read my, my feelings on politics, if you go to charlynames.com, I have the soapbox. I got, I think, nine years worth of soapboxes in the three months out of the house. Man, I don't want to get up to get into I don't recommend candidates that sort of thing. I would say the, the main thing for people to do is to vote. Period. Go vote. Yeah, do you realize what a small amount of people, percentage of people vote in this country? Do you know if as much as 75 or 80 percent of the qualified electorate voted in this country at one time it would show Washington DC down to its heels? Because you know if you stop and think about this, they know about how many people should vote. They know about where to put their money about what to do their television advertising, about what, how to handle all this stuff. The rest of the people are not going to vote. They're not concerned about it. So apathy is the big enemy of democracy. It always has been. It always will be. So first of all, I'd say go out and vote. And secondly, I would say, that, you know, go vote your heart. Everybody don't feel the same. Way. Some people feel like we should go further left. Some people feel we should go further right. Uh, some people feel we should stay in the center. Uh, the main thing is, is, is find out something about, find out about the candidate you vote for. Know who you're voting for. And it's very hard to do because there's a reticence on the, the part of the candidates to let us see their one-eyed jacks. You see my pair of playing cards? Mm -hmm. See jacks? You don't see one side of their face. Right. You know, there's another side over here that we very rarely see. And we get a look at that other side sometimes. We don't like that to see. So I would say find out about your candidate. And, and I, I'm not talking about the rumor and you end up talking about facts. And then vote your heart, vote your conscience. Because it, and, and people your age, I mean, the, the, the future of this country is, you know, is up for grabs, really. And it's important for you, him, and everybody in here, regardless of the age, to go and push that button. To get a true reflection of what I'm going to do, we don't really get it because some people come in here are so apathetic, are so lazy that they won't go out and vote, which is a right that a lot of people have died to give us. So I would, first of all, I'm giving you a long answer, but it's a very important subject. I would say, first of all, go vote. Vote your conscience. No, you can't. And you play a lot for the military. And I just want to thank you for that. And I know you get as much of a gratifying experience out of that, too. Um, are you planning on going back anytime soon? There, our, our, uh, our, 
one of our big National Guard units is going to be redeployed next year, and there's a possibility, a very strong possibility, I'd say right this time, that we might go back to uh, Southwest Asia next, next year. It's a good possibility. They'll be deployed, and on that, it's a good possibility. Uh, that's the least we can do. Thank you very much, sir. I really you appreciate it. It's an honor.